Hi friends, and thank you for joining us in this nightly read-along. Don't forget to ask your parent to subscribe so you don't miss any future chapters. Wish Tree was written by Katherine Applegate and was published in 2017. Now here's Miss Kate with tonight's chapters. Wish Tree Chapter 17 As much as I was concerned about the baby's reaction to Francesca's words, I was more worried about Samar. What would happen when she returned from school and saw the word carved into me? Would she think it was meant for her and for her family, as Francesca and the police seemed to assume? She came home alone. Ahead of her, by a few yards, was Stephen. A reporter from the neighborhood newspaper was waiting on the sidewalk, interviewing people as they walked by. Word travels fast in our parts, especially when there's yellow police tape involved. Had they seen what had happened? The reporter kept asking. Had they ever made wishes on wishing day? What did they think the word leave meant? The reporter approached Stephen. Did he know why someone would card leave into the beloved local wish tree? Stephen stared at the reporter. Then he glanced her behind at Samar, sending her the shadow of a sad smile. Without answering the reporter, he headed toward his house. Samar's eyes darted from Stephen to the reporter to me. She ran closer, saw the word, and gasped. She reached a hand toward me, but the police tape put me out of reach. Are you a resident? The reporter asked. Would you like to comment on the incident? Samar didn't say a word. She turned and walked up the sagging steps to the little blue house, her head held high, standing tall, reaching deep. Chapter 18 Around six that evening, Sandy and Max returned. When the police knocked on the door of the greenhouse, Stephen's parents opened it and answered questions. They shook their heads. They shrugged. Then they shut their door and closed the curtains. When the police knocked on the door of the blue house, Samar's parents opened it and answered questions. They rubbed their eyes. They sighed. Then they, too, shut their door and closed the curtains. As Sandy and Max headed back to their cruiser, Sandy paused beneath me. I wonder if we should make a wish, she said. Might be our last chance. I'll tell you what I wish for, Max said. I wish I didn't have to investigate things like this. Sandy patted his shoulder. I wouldn't hold my breath on that one. As for me, I spent the evening hours reassuring the parents and offspring who called me their home. They weren't just worried about where they would have to move, of course. They were worried about me. I was worried about me, too. I didn't want to leave the world I loved so much. I wanted to meet next spring's owl nestlings. I wanted to praise the new ma maple sapling across the street when it blushed red at sunset. I wanted my roots to journey farther, my branches to reach higher. But that is how it is when you love life. And I could accept that if my time had come, it had come. After a life as fine as mine, who was I to complain? I was worried about the babies, though, about their parents scrambling to find new safe places to line their nests, dig their burrows, hide their winter stashes of acorns. Most of all, I was worried about Samar. I don't know why. Perhaps it was because she reminded me so much of another little girl from another time long ago, a little girl I'd managed to shelter successfully. Francesca's great-grandmother. Like I said, we go way back. Chapter 19 Long after midnight, Samar came to visit me. She wore a blue robe. Her dark curly hair was pulled back in a loose ponytail. Her eyes held the moonlight in them. She sat at the base of my trunk on her blanket. She didn't look at the carved word or the splinter of moon or the, green, the blue and green houses. She just sat quietly and waited. It, took, it always took a while, but it always happened. One by one, the babies ventured out to see her. Harold was first, flapping awkwardly down to the ground. The raccoon babies, you, you, and you, were next. Raccoon mothers are notoriously forgetful, so they don't bother with traditional names. The possums, the skunks, they all came. Samar sat perfectly still. The babies circled her. Together they sat in the shimmer of moonlight and listened to my leaves rustle. Bongo settled on Samar's shoulder. Hello, she said in her crow version of Samar's voice. Hello, Samar said, echoing the echo. Bongo squawked and Samar jumped a bit. Even Bongo's quietest caw is a bit on the harsh side. Bongo flew up to my smallest hollow and poked her head inside, her tail feathers still visible. With something shiny in her beak, she returned to the ground in front of Samar. Gently, she placed a tiny silver key attached to a long, faded red ribbon in Samar's open hand. It's beautiful, Samar whispered. Thank you. Bongo bent forward, rings spread, in a sort of bow. It was, in crow circles, a sign of great affection. I'd seen that key before. Bongo had inherited it from her mother. 
Crows live in extended families, and they pass information along across generations. It didn't surprise me that Bongo still had the key, or that she decided to give it to Samar. In the sweet calm, surrounded by everything I loved, moonlight, air, grass, animals, earth, people, I wondered with a pang how much longer I would be able to savor such moments. I wondered, too, if I'd done enough for the world I loved. It was something I'd asked myself before, but impending death has a way of focusing your attention. Sure, I'd provided plenty of shade, made oceans of oxygen for people to breathe, been a home to an endless parade of animals and insects. I'd done my job. A tree is, after all, just a tree. Like I'd told Bongo, we grow as much as we grow, as our seeds decided long ago. And yet, 216 rings, 864 seasons, and still something was missing. My life had been so safe. Upstairs, a curtain in the greenhouse moved. Behind it, Stephen was just visible, watching us. I knew what he was thinking. One of the advantages of being a good listener is that you learn a great deal about how the world works. In Stephen's eyes, in the way he looked at Samar that afternoon, I saw something I'd seen many times before. A wish.